So thank you very much to David uh, to inviting me to this very important meeting and for, the for giving the opportunity to share this, our experience in uh, graph verification, interoperative graph verification. Uh, the, the history of uh, the graph flow measurement uh, during the cabbage operation is very old. It belongs to 19, uh, 1972 when this paper was published uh, concerning the patency of the vein graft. And the same Grunden talked about, uh, wrote about uh, the relationship between the amount of flow compared to the caliber of the coronary arteries and the outcome of the graft afterward controlled uh, by angiography. And it uh, was clear that for the smallest uh, coronary arteries, there was a very high probability of closure uh, if the flow was below 48 millimeter per minute measured by the electromagnetic flow meter. So this is just the beginning, but it means that there is a sort of um, um, willing from the surgeon's side uh, to uh, certify the job and to know what happens in the UR in such a difficult, uh, uh, sometimes difficult procedures. And um, in, in, in the 90s, there was a renewed interest in uh, measuring the flow interoperatively, and this was for the uh, renew interest, renewed interest in uh, off-pump surgery. Uh, Gianni Angelini uh, and our group uh, cooperated in, uh, deeply in that period. And uh, the, the, issue, the issue was that probably uh, doing, doing the, the graft off-pump would have given a result lower, uh, with a lower uh, quality than those done on pump. That's why uh, was introduced a new method, the transit time flow measurement, to measure the flow during the operations. And these are three papers, uh, very interesting uh, in uh, uh, considering the difference in flow uh, for those graphs done on pump or off pump. And one patient talked about the uh, superiority of the flows uh, done off pump, but the other two uh, talk about the, uh, the opposite, just the opposite. And in, in my experience uh, of 15, 17, 17 years in uh, practice this uh, method, uh, I confirm that probably off pump, you, when you do off pump, you achieve a lower. Uh, flows, lower mingler flow than uh, those graphs done on pump. But this is not the, the issue. So what, what the transit time flow measurement can give you? This is a curve and these are the parameters that the equipment can give you. Uh, first of all, the mean graph flow, that is the red line above the zero flow line is a, an average evaluation of the uh, flow into the graft. And it is uh, given by milliliter per minute, is a true flow, is not a velocity, is a true flow. Because the technology gives you the true flow inside the graft. Then the pulsatility index that, is, uh, that comes from a formula, that is the maximum flow uh, less than minus uh, the minimum flow divided by the average flow. And this is a very important parameter because can give you some directions in uh, um, behaving in observing the, the fate of the graft. Then there is the backward flow area. It's a, a small curve. Uh, uh, this is the small area below the zero flow line that could be uh, big or not. It depends on uh, uh, the, uh, the quality of the flow inside the graft. And it, it, it is an index of the patency of the anastomosis per se. And uh, we will see uh, what's the meaning, the true meaning. And then there is the uh, percentage of diastolic flow uh, that, that the last uh, revision of the equipment gives you as a blue, in, in blue color. In 2006, uh, trying to uh, find some directions in uh, use of, uh, uh, of the prediction of flow uh, given by the transit of flow measurement, we carried on uh, an evaluation of 300 grafts, uh, and we found some cutoff parameters, uh, some cutoff of the parameters. For example, uh, for the mean graph flow, 
we found that across the 50 milliliter per minute was a cutoff value with uh, odd ratio by 20 times more if the flow is below 50 milliliter per minute to have a graft occluded at uh, angiographic control at the follow-up of seven months postoperatively. The same was for the pulsatility index, uh, whose cutoff was set by three, and the percentage of backflow flow uh, that cut off the risk was uh, given by uh, value, value across zero, and uh, the same risk was for a percentage of backflow flow more than 3%. The, uh, these are the raw curves of uh, the three parameters, and uh, looking at the literature, uh, we found that uh, uh, there are different uh, values of these, mean, these parameters uh, across all the geographical areas uh, that, that is probably explained by the difference in uh, the size of coronary arteries. And uh, the cutoff uh, values uh, given by Teresa Kieser in a paper that was included in a uh, in the, the 2010 guidelines on myocardial revascularization, are those uh, limit, limits, uh, uh, those cutoffs given by uh, the uh, company uh, who is producing the equipment. But uh, from our paper of 2006, there's an information very important. The amount of backward flow that is depicted by below the zero flow line is important to, uh, to um, for the function of the graft, for the late function of the graft. Uh, we can have two kinds of uh, information about the flow curve. If the backward flow, as I stated before, is across zero, and the flow curve, the, the mean graph flow is low, and the PI could be I, and this is an, a sign of anatomical occlusion at the site of the anastomosis. But in case we have a backward flow very high, the PI becomes very, very high, and this could be defined as a functional occlusion of the, of the graft. And this is probably addressed to a non-critical stenosis of the native coronary artery on which we put the graft, or by a competition of flow between the two branches of a Y conduit, for example, for an arterial conduit. Uh, and this probably is one of the issues that could be discussed uh, in, in putting in all the patients uh, the indication to do uh, the total arterial revascularization using both mammaries. But what, what's the meaning of a cutoff value? First of all, uh, going back to the literature, we find that uh, there's a good amount of specificity of the method, but there's a big lack of sensitivity of the transit time flow measurement alone. And the value of the cutoff uh, of the parameters, uh, statistically speaking, uh, recalls a blind area across uh, the same value. So that means that you have a, a wide area of uncertain prediction of the fate of the graft. So I mean that 50 milliliters or 20 milliliters is not a border, a fixed border. Uh, I mean that if it is 19, the, 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 the graft is patent. If it is, it is not patent or if it is 21, the graft is patent. There is an unpredictable area of the patency of the graft. This is why the diagnostic accuracy of the, the method per se alone is not so high. So what? can we do to increase the diagnostic accuracy of the procedure? Uh, starting from 2009, we, start, we started to uh, use uh, an, the imaging, including in the same equipment, uh, in union with uh, the transit time flow measurement in order to increase uh, the diagnosis of the uh, failing anastomosis. And we published this paper in which we submitted to the analysis retrospectively 700 graphs. Uh, on, the, on the right, you have the uh, flow chart uh, of our paper. And using this method, this um, combined method, uh, function and imaging, we were able to, uh, to achieve a quite uh, total, complete diagnostic accuracy as you can see in a table uh, below the slide. And this is our proposed flow chart. 
to, uh, to control interoperatively, to verify the graphs. And we, uh, we take into account, uh, obviously, uh, first of all, we, we measure, we, we take the images uh, for the aorta and for the body graft in order to assess which kind of procedure we have to do on the patient if uh, we have to use on-pump or off-pump to change the strategy. Uh, then we do the operation and then we, have, uh, we take images, first of all, of the anastomosis, scanning the site of the anastomosis either uh, in long axis and in short axis. If we don't find uh, a morphological issue on the anastomosis, we redo the procedure. If we don't find the, uh, any issue, we start with the functional verification at different levels during the procedure, just one after. It depends on if you, if you do it off pump or on pump, but uh, fundamentally we, we go with the functional verification. If we, if we find a good flow uh, over the cutoff we stated, uh, there is a good graph pro prognosis. Uh, if we find a borderline cutoffs, we do the butamin test, as we published in, a, in another, uh, many years ago. Uh, and if the butamin test uh, doesn't uh, give you an increase of the parameters that stay below the cutoff values, uh, probably the anastomosis is patent, but the fate of the graph is poor for a runoff situation. Uh, if we have a slight or no change uh, in, in case of we have a uh, backward flow much more than 3%, we suspect a competition of flow, and so we rearrange the conduits. And these are uh, some uh, videos taken from our procedure. This is the uh, left internal mammary artery controlled. This is my finger. Uh, uh, so uh, to depict, this is a Y conduit, a Y connection between the two mammaries. And this is the, the core flow mapping. Uh, this is a, a short axis of uh, uh, an anastomosis. And there is a, a typical figure of eight, uh, uh, quite wide at the level of the anastomosis, in order to assess the good function of the graph. Uh, this, this is a, a dissection of the mammary artery. Uh, look how uh, big is the, uh, how clear is the definition. And this is a short axis of the same artery dissected. This is the intimal flap. And obviously we redid the anastomosis. Uh, we, we, can, we can use the um, imaging to select the site of this anastomosis. And this is a case in which we uh, confirm the diagnosis of a severe stenosis in uh, the LAD. And then we choose another site to do the anastomosis. We, we, we can have the, the chance to measure in the, in the internal lumen of the coronary arteries. And this is the anastomosis at the end of the procedure. Uh, obviously, we can, we can do the epiaortic scanning. Look, this is a very huge plaque onto the aorta and uh, partially calcified. And with a color flow, it's possible to uh, depict the, the internal surface of the, of the artery. And then we had the chance to measure the, the width of the plaque and we changed the procedure. And this is a case in which in the aortic dissection we cannulated with the, same, with the aid of this procedure, we cannulated the true lumen as a central cannulation. And we use the procedure either to, uh, to look for a diagnosis of coronary stenosis in cases were not submitted to coronary angiography before the operation. And this is what we, what, what we found in, uh, in a case of uh, a severe uh, aortic valve endocarditis in which a cardiologist wouldn't have the, the coronary angiography before. Uh, this is a plaque onto, a severe plaque onto the LED. And this is a confirmation by the colorful mapping. 
we put a graft onto this, and this is the result of the procedure. This is a cross scanning of uh, the, the site of the anastomosis, and this is the, the result of uh, the, uh, the graft flow after the procedure. And the amount of flow confirmed that that was a very severe uh, stenosis onto the native circulation. And this is a CT scan afterward, uh, postoperatively. Uh, by the CT scan, the radiologist was able to confirm and to quantify the amount of the stenosis onto the LED because it was heavily calcified. Yes. Uh, these are the cases in which we uh, used uh, this procedure alternatively to coronary angiography. And in one, the last case done last, uh, last week, we were able to uh, exclude any kind of uh, lesion onto the LED. So there is a, a clear evidence that intraoperative graft verification in coronary surgery is useful as needed to confirm the good result of cabbage, cabbage procedure. Uh, the, uh, the aid of imaging is advantageous to achieve an almost complete diagnostic accuracy and to obtain very important information in modifying the strategy uh, with the ABRT scan. Uh, even if transit time flow meter from measurement shows a low sensitivity, once the anastomosis patency has been confirmed by imaging, its role remains crucial in predicting the fate of the graft. Thank you.